Welcome to Two Diet Features. I'm Janae and this and is Tarumi. And today we're here to talk to you again about something that is another hot topic in education dumb. And that would be classroom management, one of our favorite things. <laughs> so well, when we start this conversation, let's just talk about, first of all, what is classroom management? So what's your definition of classroom management? The classroom management, and I, I wrote it down because, you know, so many that I found. Classroom management, a system to create a safe learning environment. Okay. That's it. All right. And so just to add to that, I wrote that it's a structured learning environment with clear cut rules that promote learning as well as consequences that diminish or eliminate behaviors that get in the way of learning. And that came from weareteachers.com. So basically, in a nutshell, we can say classroom management is just how you manage the room. Yes. Period. It's just how you manage the room. It's how you how everything functions. What do you do in any circumstance? So that's basically all classroom management is. However, we know after having been in this for years and years and years that if you don't have good classroom management, it makes your days long and hard. And nothing functions. Right. It doesn't function. You go home tired. Mm -hmm. The kids don't get what they needed to have gotten the complete day. And that's what leads to teacher burnout, yes. in my opinion. And one more thing that is very um, important to notice is that discipline management is not the same as a classroom management. However, discipline is a part of yes. classroom management. Yes. And I think a lot of times people get kind of messed up about mm -hmm. that thinking, oh, it's discipline or oh, it's this when it's a myriad of things. Yes. It's, not, it's not a one, like a one step kind of no. thing. It's the conglomerate of things. If you think about how you run your household, you have a lot of different procedures and rules and things that you do to make Routines. your household run smoothly. Classroom management is the same way. There's a lot of different things that you have to do to make sure that it runs smoothly and there's not one thing. So we kind of touched on it already, but I'm just going to talk about why is classroom management even important? I found some research and basically, basically it said that they have found that effective teachers are the most important factor in student success. Mm -hmm. Duh. I mean, I don't know <laughs> what else to say about that. That's to me, that's a duh. If you're in education, that's, that should be the main thing. That's the whole point of being in education as it goes. And it shows that students who have highly effective teachers show more success over the course of the school year, regardless of their level, when they enter the classroom. And I'm trying, I want to focus on that because a lot of times you hear teacher when you have that water cooler conversation or you have that lounge conversation mm -hmm. where teachers feel like they can't do anything because the kid is so low. Yeah. No. I mean, there's a, a little bit to that, but you can't blame everything on that. Mm -hmm. So highly effective teachers have figured out how to make a child successful regardless of how low or how high they may be. So when you're thinking about classroom management, think more about being an effective teacher. If you're an effective teacher, your management is just mm -hmm. part of your effectiveness. Yeah, it will be the classroom management becomes part of the best teacher's practices mm -hmm. because if you cannot manage the routines and systems, that's why it says that it's a system. It's just it's not just linear, just one part of it. If you cannot get to the point where your classroom pretty much can function without you, mm -hmm. the classroom management it's not a complete system. Mm -hmm. If you as a teacher in the classroom are the single factor, the biggest factor I wanna say, for the classroom to run smoothly, then you are not in a best classroom uh, management. What I wanted to say, and this is 
very important, I think, in my opinion. When we talk about that, specifically when you are a new teacher, classroom management becomes the single, single more, more fear factor for a teacher because it's assumed I don't know what to do or this is my way of doing it and there is no other way of doing it. It's kind of an opening to understand that your classroom management each year will have something that is completely part of you and how you do things, but each year it will adapt to the group of kids that are coming to you. And that's really important. That's really important mm -hmm. that you understand that it may not be the same this year as it was last year. I can remember vividly having a class at one point, a fifth grade class, that they pretty much ran themselves. It was, yeah. it was just like I came in and I said, okay, here's what needs to happen. This is how it needs to happen. And I could pretty much stand back and, you know, give them the content, give them what I wanted them to do. And they pretty much just did it on mm -hmm. their own. And it made for a really stressless class yes. you know, a year and a stressless day. And that, that was one of the best years that I probably had. That class was, they were overachievers. I even was able to get the mayor to come to talk to that class mm -hmm. because they were so able to just function and do some things. Um, he was very impressed with what they did and he came to talk to the class. So like she said, it's not going to be the same every year. Now, mm -hmm. some things you may do the same every year, mm -hmm. but depending upon the personality of the class that you have, some things are going to be different. Yeah. All right. So that just leads us into knowing that in order to yield these highly effective results, it takes a whole lot of stuff together yes. to get those things. So you have to have the knowledge of the content. You have to have the best practices and strategies. You have to know the population that's being taught. You have to have a good plan. Yes. Uh, you have to have some idea of how you want your classroom to look. You have to have all those things together, and that makes up your classroom management. Um, again, for teachers that are just starting out, let me just say, even for us that have been doing it forever, things come up, stuff goes wrong, mm -hmm. you'll freak out, just take a breath, and pull it back in, and start over again. Because it's going to happen. It will, it Trust will. me when I tell it you it's going to happen. Even the best made plans go wrong. Yes. And so there will be days that you walk in the room and you think, oh, I got this procedure for this. I got that procedure for this. This is going to go this way. And it only takes one kid mm -hmm. to come in there and mm -hmm. put a monkey wrench in the whole thing. And it will throw everything off. And you'll wonder, what did I do? Yeah. And just take a breath. And start again. It, it's not specifically for new teachers mm -hmm. that are starting. If you can learn and if you can hear one thing in the beginning of the year, it's this. Take a deep breath. Things will happen. You manage it. It's not going to happen on the first week, on the second week, on the third week. Most probably will not happen in the first year mm -hmm. without you teaching. But each time you gain more experience and you will know how to immediately switch when something is out of the usual routines that you have. So don't worry, you get there. And so as you begin to think about the upcoming year, uh, if you are like we are, we know we only have a few more weeks of uh, summer vacation yeah. left before we have to jump into all these professional developments and so forth and so on. We're already thinking about what do I want the students mm -hmm. to do as far as this in my classroom. So you start thinking early about how you want your class to function. Now, let me throw in this caveat. We already know that the district or your school may require certain management things that you yes. have to do because that's the district initiative yes. or that's the building initiative. Mm -hmm. And you have to work your things into those initiatives. Mm -hmm. But 
you still should take the time to sit down and think, how do I want my room to function from the time the student walks in until the time the student walks out? How do I want that classroom to function? Yes. And it differs from person to per person to person yes. because our personalities are different. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, it may not bother Rumi for a student to get up while she's doing direct teaching and sharpen a pencil or throw something in the mm -hmm. trash. Whereas for me, that's going to send me over the edge. Yes. So since I know that's going to send me over the edge, from the very beginning, I'm going to yeah. train my students yes, and tell them. to let them know mm -hmm. when this is happening, you're not going to the pencil yes. sharpener. You're not throwing trash out. Absolutely. You have to have a procedure for everything because you will be surprised, new people, how easily... One little thing, one kid going to put something in the trash can disrupt your whole entire day. Yes. And you'll have to <laughs> wrangle the cats back in because it will be just like wrangling cats. Mm -hmm. um, so you should start sitting down thinking about how you want your class to run. What do you want them to do as soon as they walk in the door? Because most districts, if they're anything like ours, we have to stand at the door and greet the students mm -hmm. individually as they come in. Yes. So that means they're going to come into your classroom and they're going to need to have some so idea as to what they're supposed to be doing when yes. they get in there while you're standing at the door greeting the rest of the students. So that's some place to start. How do you think you want your classroom to run when the students walk in? for the whole time they're in there until they leave. Now, some uh, stuff that I looked at, they focus more on the discipline aspect. Mm -hmm. Please know that discipline is a part of it. It is not the end all be all. No. So my thing was never to focus on disciplinary things. My- The consequences. Not even the consequences, just focusing on the things that are gonna go wrong. Yeah. Okay. Got it. My focus was on how am I going to get from A to B? Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. A to B. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at it specifically as in, okay, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. No. How am I going to get from A to B smoothly? How is this going to be comfortable for everybody, everybody in the room? Yes. And that's how I look at it rather than okay, I read the report and I know I have this kid, this kid, this kid, and they were a problem last year, so I have to be prepared to deal with those kids. Well, in the back of my mind, yeah, you do have to be aware of those things, but they're coming in with a clean slate. My personality is different from wherever they came from, so my way may not um, cause any friction for whatever was going on with them before they came in the room. Uh -huh. So to me, everybody's coming in with a clean slate. This is how I like things to go, so... That's how I'm thinking yes. about it, not from a disciplinary standpoint, although that is a part of it. Consequences have to be a part of it. But I would rather focus on the positive rather than the negative because it'll make, to me, make life easier for you. Well, I always focus on the prevention of this type of behavior. Right. So granted, there yeah, will be yeah. a specific case that you will have to work specific ways for them inside the rules that you have for the whole class. But my thing has always been how the routine and the structure in the classroom can avoid mm -hmm. the discipline problem. And then work with the whole of the class because the big secret that majority of people will not tell you is this. Ready? The class will control the discipline. Mm -hmm. If the class doesn't know how to shut down that class clown, you will have a problem with that kid all the time. But sometimes the class reacts as we're not interested in that because what we're doing, it's more interesting. If you get to the point where the class itself managing you, you done you can just sit and watch and it magic will happen but, but I think the key thing with what you just said is that's definitely a highly effective teacher yes because if the students are really engaged and they have buy-in and I hate saying that but that's 
one of the little buzz terms. If they have <laughs> buy-in to your class and they enjoy what they're doing every day with you, mm -hmm. they are going to self-manage that class. Mm -hmm. They're definitely going to do that because they're going to feel like we're going to miss something exciting. We're going to miss something fun. We're going to miss something that we might not have known. So we want to make sure that everything is with the way it's supposed to be so we can get yeah. everything that we want to get. So that is a that is an excellent point, in my opinion, that if you're really an engaging teacher, your class will discipline itself. Absolutely. Because they don't want to miss anything. And if your routines are very clear since the beginning, and I'm talking specifically for routines, in my case, this is what I did. I will stand on the doorway and I will close my eyes and I'll say, okay, so what do I want? Where do I want them to walk when they come in? What's the first thing that they need to do? How do they put the backpacks on the back of the chairs? Every single thing I have to think, what is my expectation and what is my preferred way to be done? And then I will straightforward demonstrate that to the kids. And they have specific routines and specific rules. So for example, one of my rules has always always been, I really don't need to know that you need to go to the restroom. I really don't. If you need to, go sign your name, the hour, go to the restroom, come back. Two or three times I had to be, at, you have a minute and a half, if not, I'm coming to look for you. And I will go at the door of the bathroom and say, hey, I'm here. But I really don't need that. They can do it specifically, the, 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 the upper level elementary, they can do it by themselves. Because otherwise you have this kid that goes and it will interrupt your teaching or whatever you're doing in the middle of. It's unnecessary. But this is me. You have to think what part is important for you, what part is not important for you, what part the school that you are is mm -hmm. the, the, the general rule and then adapt and adapt and adapt and then teach the routines to the kids because the routines will save you a lot of time, a lot of unnecessary talk and a lot of disciplinary issues. Right. And so these days, especially if you're come, just coming into the, the profession, there is a lot of information out yes. there about classroom management. I mean, there are YouTube videos, there's tons and tons of books, there are websites that are just dedicated specifically mm -hmm. to classroom management. So there, there is not a lack of information. No. So if you want to see some examples or read some different ways people are doing things, it's out there. Now, I remember when I first started, Harry Wong was the thing. Uh -huh. So everybody got the Harry Wong book. Our, our school, mm -hmm. you know, our district basically purchased it for every teacher. It had to be on your desk. That was one of the things that they looked for when they came to your class, do your mm -hmm. um, observation. Was your Harry Wong book on the desk? Um, did you follow? We had to follow it lock and stock. So we had to follow everything that he said. So they look for the things from the Harry mm -hmm. Wong book. Now, I will say, as a new teacher, it was a godsend for me. Because yes. it had some really good things in there. Yes. And even today, I think those things There's still things ring true. true. Mm -hmm. But now there's a bunch of things out there that you can go and look up. And she's going to talk to you about mm -hmm. some of those things that are out there, but there's no reason for a person not to understand what classroom management no. is because there's too much information out there. So you want to tell them about some of the different kinds? Of different I, kinds? <laughs> yeah. So after so many years, you find a lot of different things to they put over there. It depends on where you're coming from. It depends from where the method is coming from, but you will find information. So if you're just starting, well, it's a perfect way mm -hmm. to go. Just go step by step. It will work. It will really work. And then with time, you're going to start changing um, ways of doing it. One, two, three. It's another one. I, when I was using it, I really loved it. I'm not going to deny that. It, because it kind of took away from me 
the guilt to be the one imposing the consequence mm -hmm. because it's you have one chance two chance the third one done and you just go that's one that's two because the rule it's it's not big power but when i have to input the consequence then it's not on me it's your choice it's coming one of the biggest proponents right now as a management system and i know a lot of people know about it speech as a champion and let me be clear there is a lot of things that you can use a lot not all of it it's um adapted to be for a public school so where we are because the, the method comes from a charter a charter school settings but there is a lot of stuff that you can use for example the threshold which is the uh, the morning routine of saying hi and everything the, the strong start where it's exactly what they do when they come in in your classroom the way of monitoring the kids and it's very much step by step by step by step if you're not feeling very secure of what you're doing or you're just starting in education as a teacher grab that book go in read figure out if that works for you because it's a very nice manual of how to do things step by step. The other one is the brain-based management, which I'm kind of inclined to go into because it's more of, okay, just reflect of what's going to happen and reflect of what just happened. I know it takes a little bit more time in the beginning, but once the kids are used to do that, the reflection part, they actually stop doing that, that type of behavior before it happens. And the other thing is, is just training the brain of routines and steps to do. So I'm kind of more inclined of this thing. So not, let me just go straight forward to what is my truth about classroom management you're not going to stick with one method straightforward you're not going to stick with one you will have parts of this one that works for you parts of this one that works for you part of this one that works for you and you're going to be the very eclectic teacher that will put together the parts that you as a person are comfortable and the class it's comfortable with right because a lot of the newer ones have a lot of say statements and that kind yes. of thing and for me personally, I feel like if it's, if I feel like it's disingenuous, mm -hmm. then it's not going to go well for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm only going to do what I feel like where I'm being genuine. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of those things are not genuine for me. Mm -hmm. They may work for you, but they don't work for me. And another thing I want to throw in there, and this is again for if you are a beginning teacher, please understand that when you get before your class and you begin to share your routines with them, it's not going to happen in a day. No. <laughs> it's probably not going to happen in a week. No. So the very beginning of the year, you're probably going to spend the first two weeks mm -hmm. doing procedure more than content. Yes. Now, as the days progress, you'll do less procedure and more content. But I guarantee if you really want them to be in place well, you will need to practice, 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 mm -hmm. practice, and practice again. It, it, it's, it, it's an expectation. And I know we always get a scope and sequence and we get our little plan of attack and we have our nice little plans about content. But until the procedure is there, the content is going to go out the door. Mm -mm, not all right? happening. So don't think you can just, oh, when you come in and do this, when you go up, do this, when you do, 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 do and then they're going to have it tomorrow. Nope. Because I guarantee you tomorrow you're going to have to do it again. I have never had happening the next day. No. Never. No. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen. No. It's not going to happen the next day. So be prepared to spend some time with your procedures because they're little people just like you're big people you know when you get on information overload everything that comes after that you don't understand it you don't hear it is is as if the person never said it to you the children are the same way 
you can only give them so much in a day. Now, we might go through our whole daily routine, but they're not going to absorb the whole no. day in one day. So each day, you're going to have to repeat, 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 and add a little more. And repeat that, and add a little more, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. So make sure that you understand, isn't Rome was not built in a day. No. And neither was your management routine. No. All right? And it's the best spent time yeah. of the school year. If you spend that time in the beginning of the year, yeah. I guarantee you, you will have very little time to spend um, in in the year, in the school year, on these kind of issues. You will maybe have to go and reset the classroom when, you know, around Christmas time, mm -hmm. spring break. But once it's established, it will help you not to focus on these kind of things every single moment of the day you will be free to go and teach. Make sure you have your, what needs to be posted, posted. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything is clear and they can get to it and you understand what's going on. Model All it. those things save you, save you time. So where do you start? And we kind of went back and forth with that. Yes. So where do we start? First, of, first and foremost, I think one of the most important things you need to do is get to know your students. Yes. Now, how you choose to get to know them is up to you. It'll be different for everybody. I remember when I was younger and I had more brain cells, I would literally... <laughs> you just <laughs> Yes, when I had more brain cells, I literally, even though I had some very huge classes when I first started, at, at one point I had 44 kids, 6th and 7th, 6th graders per class for wow. like 6 classes a day. All right, I would play a game with them where they had to tell me their name and they had to tell three things about themselves. And I took it upon myself to memorize their name and those three things, every kid, every class. And that's how I learned about them. So at any given moment, I could pull out any kind of random information, you know, about them. And it helped me to memorize their names, get their names, because that's very important that you know their names, you know how to say their name correctly because mm -hmm. we both have those names that people <laughs> can't say so it's important to be able to know how to say their names correctly so i spent a lot of time going through understanding what interests them what did they like what do they want me to know about them and i made sure that i made that a big deal now as i got i've gotten older i don't spend as much time with that but i do do different activities so that i can know some stuff about them and i always had a thing where uh, being from Kansas City, born and raised in Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas, the Kansas City Chiefs have always been my favorite football team. Mm -hmm. I would always have my Kansas mm -hmm. City Chiefs stuff up somewhere in my room. And one of the things that I always use to break the ice, I would always tell my classes, this is my team. I don't care who your team is. If my team loses, you're going to have a bad day on Monday. <laughs> And so it just became like a running joke. Oh, so yes. especially because at the time the Chiefs were horrible. <laughs> they were horrible, but that was still my team. So it, you know, it made us have conversation. We started off the day, you know, everybody came in, oh, your team lost, blah, 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 my team won, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, you know, it, it, get, it built the rapport. Yes. So, it let them know that I'm more than just this person standing up here mm -hmm. giving you information. You know, they felt like, okay, we can we can kind of trust her. She's yes. kind of friendly. She has a sense of humor. You know, one of my other things I always tell the students, and, and you can kind of probably tell from looking at us on this video, I have a um, poker face. Yes, and you I do. would tell the kids. From I'm so the, angry about that. <laughs> I would tell the kids all the time from the very first day. I'm going to smile at you today, but come tomorrow, you won't see this again or probably until the end of the year. So that was always like a running joke too. So anytime something would happen and I would burst out laughing or just, it mm -hmm. would just like amaze them. They're just like, oh my God, she's laughing. Mm -hmm. You know, like what happened? You're not supposed to be smiling or da 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 But all these kind of things I did to help build rapport with the students. Um, Doing uh, projects or beginning of the year things 
that they took ownership of that could be placed around the room so that they could feel like this is my room. I made the rooms about the students. Yes. All right? And I think that's really important because I want them to feel like, you know, you're here for a reason. It's about you. It's really not about me. Mm -hmm. I have my little section, so I'm going to give you the opportunity to have a section mm -hmm. too, along with the content. So building rapport. What's some things that you do? Well, the same way. I do believe I'm a strong believer that you build relationship with your kids. So I start opposite though i start with presenting me as a person and it usually starts with my son is a video game developer oh big big hit every single time big hit especially with the boys which is mm -hmm. very important and then we start talking about video games which i happen to know and then comic books which i happen to know and then we kind of move to the girls part and i will tell you there is nothing better to be a relationship with a girl that talk about the hair <laughs> always works but this is me this is how i approach that i present my videos for the flip classroom the majority of the times i show them and the the problems that i have created around my two dogs and the cat and they love to see that because I'm that person now. I'm very, very straightforward with them. If there is something that I'm not accepting and I'm not ready to let you do, you will see it right here. So for majority of them, when I go like this, they know it's bad, we're not. And I have specific words and specific phrases where I just tell them, that's not acceptable. For example, in my case, I go, you're getting too close to the thing, the red line. And they kind of stop. So they know where my limit is immediately. I have um, learned with time and with experience. And I'm just, that's a gift. If you have time to sit down and talk with the kids for something that it's not school, no school their dogs, yeah. their cats, yeah. uh, where they went uh, for the Sunday brunch or how is grandma doing? You will get this gift on your side. Yeah. I mean, sometimes if you really, really, you know, want them to have the buy-in, you're gonna have to do some things that may be uncomfortable for you. I remember one year I had some girls who were very, very shy. Me being a person that's painfully shy as well, I understood that. So I began writing them notes mm -hmm. and it became a thing. I would write to them, they would write to me, and then it just became a thing. I would walk in, mm -hmm. up in the room and there'd be notes yes. or a, a notepad on my desk and you know, please write me back. And that's how we communicated with each, each other. But it was it was fun for me because then I learned a lot about them and I was able to share some things with them that made our year together, you know, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have a lot of issues with um, discipline or any of those kind of things, or their feelings being hurt because they were so shy and so, so forth and so on, because we wrote notes to each other because that was the way it was comfortable for them to communicate. So sometimes you may have to do some things that you may that not, not want to do. You do have to let them know that you are human. We've had some tough conversations, you know, things have come. Don't be afraid to share if it fits with the moment. I remember when I first started out, when the gang stuff first kind of came out in Kansas City, and we had some issues with some of our students getting in trouble going towards these gangs. And sometimes, one, a couple of times, I had to close the door and just have a real, uh, almost mother to children conversation mm -hmm. about why this is not a good thing and you know when you come in this room this is what's going to be expected and you know i can't control what you do at home but i can control what you do in here and that whole thing so be genuine yes be upfront and be consistent be trustworthy 
Yes, definitely. If a trustworthy. kid comes to you or you go to a student and say, this is between you and me, I need to know what's going on so I can help you. It stays between you and the student. That's it. You find a way to go around and investigate or help, whatever it is. But whatever this student, this kid told you, it stays with you. If they are not trusting you, nothing is yeah. going to happen in the classroom. And so that just leads me to say, just be genuine with your students because mm -hmm. they're going to know. I don't care how young or old they may be. Mm -hmm. They're going to know if you're not being real. If you're just talking to them because that's what the teacher is supposed to do and they don't think that you're genuine, it's going to cause you more problems than not. So as you're getting to know your students, just be genuine. If you don't know something, don't act like you do. If you don't understand the culture, don't act like you do. Yes. Be honest about what you do and don't know. Uh, I've had students come from various uh, religions that I didn't understand. I just flat out ask them, okay, I don't understand this. Why do you do mm -hmm. this? Why do you wear this? Why is blah, blah, blah. That gave them the opportunity to share. Some, I think I had maybe one or two that, you know, weren't comfortable with telling me. And that was fine too. I was good with that. But I didn't know. So I'm going to ask. And sometimes they may ask you some things that might kind of catch you off guard. <laughs> okay. If it's something that you could yeah, you they know, answer, answer it honestly. Yes. But if it's not, just let them know, you know, that's not something I feel comfortable talking to you about. And let's move on. All right. So another thing that you have to do is have an idea of how you want your classroom to function. Absolutely. Just have an idea. Me, personally, I am a order chaos kind of person you don't have to be like silent all the time no. there could be noise going on but there needs to be work going on with the noise mm -hmm. so i can take a class that's not completely silent we're not sitting in rows it's not going to be perfect you know people are going to be moving we're going to be doing mm -hmm. some stuff i may be yelling you may be yelling but you know we have a goal as to what we're doing in that classroom whereas when you walk across the hall that might not be her thing. She might need for it to be a little bit more quiet. She may need for it to be a little bit more structured as far as you need to stay in your seats. Mm -hmm. People can't be on the floor. I don't care if you're sitting on the floor as long as you're getting your work done. I don't care if you're under the table as long as you're getting your work done. I right don't here. care right as long here. as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right here. But you have to know what works for you. So make sure that you have an idea of how you want it to function. Me. I don't want you walking around when I'm doing direct instruction. Mm -hmm. All of that has to wait. Something as simple as where does trash go? Yes. I nipped it in the bud. I put yes. trash cans on the desk. Don't ask me about some trash. You yes. know, we have them cutting and pasting. And they, that, that'll that become an issue for some kids. So you have to have all of those mm -hmm. things prepared. What do they do when they first come in the room? Like she said, do we put our book bags in the coat closet? Do we put it on the back of the chair? Yes. Do we stack them in the corner? You have to have a plan. So have a idea of what have an idea of what you want to do. Number three, be crystal clear with your expectations and procedures. Be crystal clear, not adult clear. Kid, kid, kid clear. clear. <laughs> yes. Be crystal clear. Yes. And then model it. <laughs> yeah, and crystal clear on top of that thing, not a lot of words. Yes. Keep it down to five words per step. If you can go with one or two words, that's perfect. It has to be clear and it has to be very, very direct. Do not explain why you're doing that. Or, no, no, if we're doing it that and that and this is what is done. Three to five words for every single one of the procedures, the steps of the procedure. And it's funny that she would say that, and she could probably attest to this. When the kids would come in my room, I would have on the, I, I would just say to them as they're coming in, good morning, read the board. Good morning, read, read the, the board. board. Good morning, <laughs> read the board. Well, the screen or whatever. And I would just have one, put your book bag away. Two, da 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 da. Three, da da da. That's it. Let's go. That's our morning routine mm -hmm. every day. So, yeah, not a whole lot of words. Make it no, crystal clear. clear. Make sure that you follow through. So, if you say we're sharpening our pencils before the tardy bell yes. rings, 
and then 15 people want to sharpen a pencil after the tardy bell ring and you go, oh, okay, go on, then you've just messed up your own procedure. Ooh. That's it. You have to follow through with whatever it is that you say. You have to, and you have to be consistent. So when I say be consistent, I'm saying if that one person gets up during your instruction time and you've already said, we're not walking during instruction, then wherever it is in your room that you put it up or you're just gonna make a quick note to let that kid know, remember, we don't do 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 or try to put it in a positive term, not a negative. Try to turn mm -hmm. it into a positive, not a negative. Remember, we are in direct instruction right now. We're not walking. Whatever you have to do and keep it moving. Don't make a huge deal out of it because if you make a huge deal out of it, you're going to blow your class. Exactly. But just make sure that you consistently remind them. And if you have to shut down a class, I don't know how many times I've told teachers this. If everything is just getting 100% out of control, shut, shut the, the class yes, down yes. and go through your procedures. Yes. Don't be afraid to say, that's it. Stop. Everybody sit down. Mm -hmm. Whatever your signal is to get everybody to be quiet and sit down, do it. Parents on board. So let me tell you what I do with parents. <coughs> I'm not going to say that there is one way of doing it. But if you get with parents and just tell them that it's not them against you, you against them, that your rules are better rules because it's a bigger society in the classroom, you will mess up. Mama rule rules the world. If mom says that this is what you have to do, you rule and you, it's not going to be more important than what mom says. So let me just give you an example of what I do. When I meet the, the parents first, I tell them I'm here to work with you. Whatever your rules are, not allow me to build my rules inside what your rules are. I have another big secret that has always worked for me. I never call home when something negative happens. I give the kid the opportunity to call first at home to the parents. I, I'm a mom. When my son was at school, I was the one, I wanted to hear the story from my son first, not from everybody else. So parents appreciate that. And when you have the parents involved of what's going on in the classroom, when the parents know what your rules are, and when the mutual respect of, they're the higher authority in the kid's life, but I'm there for this year, so let's work together. They will come on board. Show them what's going on in the classroom. Invite them to the classroom or have a, a camera in the classroom and post something. Parents wants to know what is it that is happening in your classroom. Invite them to be a teacher for a day. Best one. They will know what's going on, how difficult your job is some days, and they will understand that there are specific rules in place that probably are not good enough for their child, but they are there because it's good for the community. And I think one of the most important things that she said was communicate, with, communicate, communicate with your parents. The more you communicate with them, the more they will feel invested in that classroom. Don't wait till something goes terribly wrong or the student is 100% failing or about to fail before you reach out to that parent. Communicate all the time and don't make it be something negative every time no. you call that parent. Now we have all of these classroom systems available where Remind and do Class Dojo yes. and all those different things where you can text them and you can send them things almost daily so that they feel like they know what's going on in the mm -hmm. room. And like she said, it's very important for them to know, we understand that you have rules at home, but because this is not home, this is school, school has its own set of rules yes. too. So we respect what mm -hmm. you're doing at home, but we need you to understand this is how it works at school. So we do have to work together. One of the things I used to always do, uh, my partner and I, is when we had our Meet the Teacher, we just simply let the parents know we do home visits 
if you don't want us to come to your house, you know, go ahead and sign the paper saying you never come to my house. But most parents did it. I think we had very few parents out of all those years that told us they didn't want us to come to their house. And we let them know, we're going to come tell you the good, we're going to come tell you the bad, we're going to come tell you the ugly. And the reason why we offered to do home visits was because we understood that parents worked. Mm -hmm. We understood that sometimes it was difficult for them to get to the school. So we made ourselves available to come to them. So we've gone to jobs, we've gone to restaurants, yes. we've gone we've gone to houses, you know, we started on the first day of school, whatever we needed to do so that parents would have that rapport with us and feel comfortable with their students being in our class. And let me just tell you, when we did that, it was amazing that when something did go wrong, I rest assured that we had those parents on our yes. side and stuff was handled quickly. So we over communicated as some people might have put it, because they just didn't understand. Y'all go, we basically made it a, made a plan to go to some houses every week. Not the same yeah. houses, but we got to all of our kids. We just regularly went, you know, we would tell the kids, see you in a minute. So they knew our car in the neighborhood. They, mm -hmm. you know, they knew when we were gonna pull up. We had parents that would come from next door. <laughs> Yeah. We would go to one house and the parent from next door would come over and have a conversation and that kind of thing. So please, please communicate with your parents. That's the worst thing that you can do is not communicate with them and then call them and tell them something's wrong. It's just going to happen. You're just going to have you're problems. you're losing the parents, right? You're going to have problems. So as you can see, classroom management covers a whole lot of things. It's not one thing. It's a myriad of things. There's plenty of information out there yes. that you can use and use your colleagues. Go see what they do. If you know there's somebody in your building that has a, success, a successful classroom, go see what they do. Take some notes. Rumi has said it over and over again in diff different videos how we steal from each other. Yes. So go I steal. Think. Go look at some of the other teachers and see what they do. Have a conversation with them. Figure out what works for you. Yes. That's the most important thing. You have to figure out what works for you. And I will say this as we're ending, that if you don't have any kind of management system going on, you're going to have rough. It's going to be rough. Very rough. And probably most of the things that you're doing, you're doing it just for you. Nobody's listening to you. Yeah. Yes. And it's not happening. And that's a sad thing to see. So we don't want to see that. We don't want you to do that. So have a plan and get it done. And we're going to end it with that. We thank you for tuning in with us today. And again, if you have any questions, hit us in the comments or send us an email. And this is Vinay and Romy signing out of 2,000 Teachers. Teachers. See ya. Bye.